My name is Jamie and I'm an animal care specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo and I'm giving you an exclusive look inside of our Gibbon Forest exhibit. So right now we have three white cheeked Gibbons on exhibit with us. Um, Harrison is going to be right behind me. He is our big brother in the group and then it, just through the branches you can see Maya. She is our adult female Gibbon and then right behind her is Henley and she is little sister so she is the youngest Gibbon in the group. Um, we're hoping they can come down a little bit closer so we can get a better view of them. Um, but as you can see, we have three of our four Gibbons in here. So we do have an adult male, Mel. You may know him. He is a popular fan favorite here at the zoo. Uh, but he is inside currently while we work on here with the three other Gibbons. We can do that. We just work safety in numbers. And so I have one of my coworkers, Angela, here. Um, <laughs> and we're just feeding the gibbons and working with them. A big part of our job here is just building a relationship with these gibbons. And part of that is just through feeding and working with them. So they learn um, our faces, they learn who we are, and so we can just work with them and it makes everything safer and healthier for everything involved. As you can see with our gibbons, we do have two different colorations. So the really cool thing about gibbons is that they have sexual dimorphism. And that's a big term, but it just means that we can tell the difference between the adult gibbons um, based on their coloration. So the adult females are blonde, and when babies are born, they are all going to be blonde. And that is because they will be blending in with mom when mom is holding them on um, her stomach. So when she's doing, <laughs> when she's swinging to different branching or when she's moving around, baby stays on mom and you can't really tell the difference. Um, and then when they t are about six months to a year old, every single baby will turn black. So that is why Harrison is black. That is why Henley is black. She turned black about a year and a half to two years ago. And then the neat thing is that females will turn back to blonde once they hit sexual maturity. And so Henley will turn back to blonde probably between six to nine years of age. And then the male gibbons will stay black. Right now, Angela's feeding them a variety of produce. So I can show you some of the produce that I have in my cup and container as well. So I have some bananas, some bell pepper, carrots, sweet potato, um, oranges. These guys are omnivores, so they will eat a variety of produce and they will eat any of the brows that we give them. Uh, so they eat things like banana leaves, uh, ginger brows are some of their favorites. And then we also give them a primate maintenance biscuit <laughs> that they eat as well. Henley is still young. She's a little bit nervous occasionally, but she comes down she knows her caregivers for sure and then we also give them hard-boiled eggs <laughs> and gibbons are very vocal I don't know if you can hear any of these vocalizations that Henry Harrison is giving they're doing like little squeaks and little grunts but that's how they communicate with each other and a lot of their noises that they're doing right now are happy noises or what we think are their happy noises uh, because they're doing that when they see new enrichment or some of their favorite food items Maybe kind of hard to hear them right now because I'm talking over them. But sometimes early in the morning, gibbons will do a call. So the neat thing about gibbons is that they are pair bonded. <laughs> and every morning they will do this family call and it's this duet. And that is a way that gibbons will work on their relationships amongst themselves. And each given pair has a unique call. So the given songs that you hear between Mel and Maya and Henley and Harrison is going to be different from other gibbons that you will see and hear in other zoos. And this is how they got their nickname, the Songbirds of the Forest, which is a really cool thing about them. <laughs> Jamie, a few people would like to know, do they have any particular food that's their favorite? Oh, yes. So they love bananas. Um, they also really like apples or strawberries. They're not too picky. They will eat a wide variety of produce, um, but they do seem to like the sweeter things, some of the fruits, the sweet potato. That's some of their favorites. They do like egg, but the funny thing about these is that they like the white part of the hard boiled egg and they will drop the yolk which some of our animals, it's the exact opposite. They will only eat the yolk. Do you guys like the egg white? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about how they're moving? Sure, so when you see the gibbons, and especially Maya's doing a great shot of how long her arms are. Gibbons' arms are going to be about one and a half times longer than their body. 
And that's because when they're moving, they'll swing from one perch to another. Hermes kind of doing it coming down. And this is a very special kind of movement or locomotion called brachiation. And so adult gibbons, they can actually brachiate or move about three meters in each arm swing. So when you think about that, it's about nine feet that they can move in just an arm's length. Can you imagine what our monkey bars would look like if we could move nine feet in each swing? But when you're swinging on the monkey bars, it's kind of like brachiation. And so that's what they'll look like when they're moving up top along the top of our exhibit mesh. There, well, that wasn't a good shot, but sometimes they're really good catchers <laughs> and they will catch any of the produce that we are throwing into them. Or they can just drop it like what Harrison did right there. Lacey would like to know if each gibbon has its own unique personality and if they have any specific funny traits. Um, they do kind of have their own unique personalities. Harrison is pretty bold. He likes to interact with new enrichment items, so new toys or new stimulus that we offer them. Um, he'll be probably the first to investigate when something new appears in their exhibit that we're giving them. Henley is a little bit more cautious, but she is still young, so she's still learning. She's still exploring and figuring things out. Uh, Maya is the matriarch of the family group, so she's the one in charge. Uh, she's going to be uh, more of the boss over everyone because Gibbons have a matriarchal society. Uh, Mel, he's pretty curious. Um, he exhibits a lot of the normal Gibbon traits. He's uh, will like to protect his area. So sometimes when he comes down and you see him making different vocalizations, that's just his way of protecting his family. Um, but overall, these guys are really curious animals. They like to see new items that we're giving them, like to figure things out. And the two younger ones are very playful. Sometimes you'll see them on top of our exhibit where we hang a bunch of hanging toys that we have a hanging ladder um, and different kinds of rope toys for them. And they like to play on top of those. And they also like to jump down into the trees on our exhibit and swing from all the different branches. I also <laughs> Can you go over some of the enrichment and toys that are in here and I can sure. show so, those off? Um, in just a moment, when, Angela, do you mind taking one step forward, please, so we can show off this hammock? So this hammock is actually one of their favorite toys that they play in. It, this is a more permanent feature, so it's always there. But sometimes what you'll see them hanging out in it, they like to lay in it. Um, they will, we can put food in there and they'll interact with it. Uh, we also have different toys that we can hang with chain. And so we can hang it on the mesh of their exhibit at different heights for them to interact with. Sometimes we'll hang toys on the outside of the exhibit, like PVC toys or fire hose toys that we weave into formation so we can stick food pieces inside of their, um, inside of the toys for them to figure out how to play. Uh, some of the other features and furniture that we have in their exhibit are hanging toy or hanging ropes just from the top of the exhibit and they love to swing on these ropes one to another to another and that's where they spend a lot of time actually and you may be able to see it panned up. Those rope toys may not look like much, but that is where they spend a lot of time hanging on, swinging from the back of the cliffs, they'll swing onto the side mesh, they'll jump down into the trees. And so something that may not even look like much can be one of their favorite items. And so they really enjoy swinging on those ropes. And what you're seeing right now is just a portion of our exhibit. This is a huge exhibit. Uh, it goes very tall. These guys are arboreal, which means that they spend a lot of time in the trees and up high. And so we give them a lot of vertical space that they can play in. They like to go on different mesh, or excuse me, the different layers and the different formations on the rock work. And then we have a whole other side of the exhibit that is on the other side that we have a pool for the otters to swim in and different ways that they can interact with them. You can see Henley is just hanging out on the limestone rocks in the back. Maya's grooming herself right now. Primates in general are very social animals and so they do spend a lot of time grooming. They'll either groom themselves or you'll see them grooming with their uh, co-specifics, the other animals that are in that exhibit. And then they live together. And this is just a way that they, they bond together. So a lot of times we bond with our family members by spending time together or playing games together. And Gibbons will do that too, but they also groom each other. And that's a common natural behavior for primates to exhibit. Just one way that they help keep clean. 
We had another question. Uh, they would like to know, were any of the Gibbons born here? Yes, so Henley and Har Harrison were born here. Harrison turns six, I believe, in the end of May. And then Henley just celebrated her, it was her third birthday, because she was born in 2017 um, in February. So both of the, the two kids were born here. Where are Gibbons originally found? In Southeast Asia. So there's a lot of different gibbon species, uh, but gibbons in overall will be found in Southeast Asia. So Thailand, Malaysia, um, Indonesia, even some parts of China. There's a lot of different gibbon species. Unfortunately though, these guys are endangered. Um, overall, a lot of times tourists like to come and take pictures with them because they're super cute, but that can lead to babies being taken from their natural habitat. <laughs> And just overall um, habitat destruction is just contributing to their decline. So the, one of the best ways that you can learn more about them is to visit your, your zoo or to participate in Facebook Live chats like this uh, to learn about a lot of the really neat animals that can be found at the San Antonio Zoo or across the zoos in the U.S. Can you tell us, are gibbons monkeys? No, so that's a great question. So gibbons are actually apes, and a really quick, easy way that you can tell is that they don't have tails. Monkeys have tails, apes do not. So gibbons are more closely related to um, gorillas, chimpanzees, or orangutans, the great ape species. Gibbons are known as lesser apes, and that's just because of their size. They are going to be a lot smaller than any of the great ape species. So Maya and Mal, the adults, they probably weigh 30 to 40 pounds, I, I think off the top of my head, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Um, whereas the great ape species can weigh up to a couple of the, the males can be. Harrison is chirping. If you hear any of the chirping, I don't know if I can that. But that is Harrison making the noises. Terry Lynn would like to know, do the siblings ever fight or pick on each other? Like <laughs> kids do. Like kids do. They are very rambunctious. So a lot of times you will see the gibbons playing with each other or they do um, mock fighting. They're just learning their natural behaviors that they would be learning naturally. Um, they are not necessarily being aggressive with each other, even though sometimes it looks like that. But gibbon play looks very different from human play. <laughs> getting down her food but sometimes you'll see them on top of the uh, we have a flat surface oops I have a terrible throw um, on the flat surface <laughs> here and you'll see them rolling around and wrestling and that's just a way for them to play and be rambunctious with each other they're just learning a lot of the natural skills that they would naturally pick up um, so learning um, just how to move and just learning how to break it and swing and go from one location to another. That's just typical given behaviors. Do you ever do any training with the Gibbons? We do. So we do some Gibbon training with them. It's not just me, it's a group of us. We'll do training with all of the Gibbons. All of the training that we do here is for medically or husbandry based. And so this way we can uh, just keep eyes and checks on the Gibbons. So a lot of what that means is that we do different body presentations so we can take a good look at what their fur condition looks like or their overall body condition. Uh, we can see different body parts, um, like their eyes, their nose, or their ears, just to see their overall health. And then we can even work on doing other um, medically-based procedures so they will line up or present for voluntary injections and things like that. And they are choosing to participate in all of their care. It's completely voluntary. We just use food, so it's positive reinforcement. And they're very smart animals, and so they will pick up on training fairly quickly. But we work with them on a daily basis. And they're always changing, evolving, and we have a lot of different plans working forward with these, this group on what they're training and what their behaviors look like. And obviously our adults know a little bit more than what the young ones do just because our adults are older, so they've just been working with a little bit longer than Henley. Obviously, she only has a couple of years. 
but it starts right now just by feeding and working with them. This is a typical relate session, what it would look like, where we just are working and building a trustful relationship with them. Well, thank you for participating and joining in on this Facebook Live video. Um, again, my name is Jamie and I'm an animal care specialist here. And during this time, I just keep coming back, keep checking out our Facebook. We are doing a lot of these Facebook Live presentations and so you can get a really good inside look of the going-ons of our zoo. Um, and I know this is a really challenging, difficult time, um, but please keep supporting us. Coming in and doing these tune-ins are great. It helps us still talk about our animals and showcase what we're doing here, which we love. If you feel um, called to do more, please consider donating to our emergency fund. You can do that by going to the zoo's, um, their website, the www.sazoo.org, or you can, there's links through all of our social media that you can help and be a part of that um, and just help support us and support our animals through this time of transition. And that's it. So thank you for coming. <laughs>